Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Alexander Hilly123 here, and it's time for chapter 9 of my Dead Space 3 walkthrough. And that's what I told you guys in the last video, because I accidentally put chapter 9 when it was actually chapter 8. Can you tell that my heart is in this walkthrough and this guide? <laughs> and that I love this game. And as we can see here, I get disconnected from Xbox Live, and I'm pause raging. I'm having a look as to what's going on, but basically, ladies and gentlemen, all that you need to know about what's going on here is my Xbox One is on its last legs. And for some reason, when I play an offline game and the connection to Xbox Live goes, I get really sluggish frame rate and it makes the game choppy and unplayable. But it's an offline game, so why does it matter? Why does it happen? Not sure why, but what I will say is... I've had my Xbox One since August 2015, and yeah, I think that it's got something to do with that. Even the controller is doing the same. It'll like lose connection for a split second and then come back. So yeah, I think my Xbox One's on its last legs, but I've really enjoyed the console, personally, despite people saying that it lost the you know, console war to so the PS4. I still had a lot of fun with it, personally. Got to admit, But yeah, this part here, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be very thankful for the massive clip that is on the chain gun, because this part, if you're not ready for it, can be a bit tricky. A lot of feeders, and of course they're incredibly strong. And the reload time here is important. See, look at me reload, but... So right on my ass as soon as I finish reloading. One force gun blast. And they're done for. Reload again. Swap out to the plasma cutter, and I've got to admit, we made light work of that. That was pretty damn good. I'm happy anyway. I pick up shitloads of loot. So yeah, very long video here guys, and it's a shame, but for me, possibly, although it's hard to tell because the last six or seven chapters of this game are all pretty much hot garbage. Chapter 14 might be the worst chapter in the game in my opinion, and guess what? It's the longest chapter in the freaking walkthrough. One hour and 27 minutes of pure Dead Space 3 action. <laughs> oh my god. I think there's an optional mission that I do during that chapter, but Christ almighty, I can't remember why it took so long. But as you can see, we've picked up an optional mission here, and this is where the game introduces the reused assets were... We will do the same optional mission essentially three or four times. The same rooms repeat themselves. It's pretty lazy. That kind of thing was done in Dead Space 2, to be fair, but in a much better, nuanced, tasteful way. And also the game will introduce the loot that you get at the end of every optional mission, where you pick up absolutely loads of stuff after you kill a couple million enemies. And as we can see, we got the Arctic Survival Suit. So we do need this suit to progress the game. And the suits in this game, I've said it before, but they're just not as good as they are in Dead Space 1 and 2 for me. They all kind of blur into one, but I do like the Arctic Survival Suit because of the kind of fur <laughs> that's on the collar. So you can get nice, snug and warm whilst you're killing some Necros. And we do get the ability to use another suit about chapters 11 or 12, but I can't be bothered. I just keep this suit until about chapter 14 or 15, I think. I think there might even be one suit after that, but what's the point? Dead Space 2, you get more inventory slots in this game. You don't. They, they shouldn't have made the frames and the circuits count in your inventory. That way it would have been more satisfying to pick up 
pick stuff up. In this game, you're always looking at your inventory and it being full. It's just frustrating, man. But yeah, we are going to do the optional mission and I like them overall. The optional missions in this game. Christ almighty, I need a shave tomorrow. Two weeks without a shave and I'm getting a bit itchy now. And this itchiness, it, it lasts for about a month before it goes. And then I, I have a full-on beard after a few months, but I've only ever let it get to that state a few times before because it just pisses me off. I'm not a big beard fan, ladies and gentlemen. See with me a beard? It's because I'm just too much of a lazy arsehole and I can't be bothered. Lacy arsehole. Christ almighty, I need some sleep, man. But, ladies and gentlemen, sometime something I can tell you, if I can manage to speak English properly in this video, is that I'm going to be using the Ripcore. I figured that there's a lot of feeders from now up until about chapter 13 or so. And yeah, I get a suspended ripper on the bottom of my plasma cutter. And overall, I have some fun with it. It's not that useful for other enemies, but it serves me well, apart from the autopsy part. I mentioned in the last part, chapter 8, that I actually died for the first time in the playthrough because it just doesn't work properly against the feeders like it should. But what I do during the autopsy part, Christ almighty, it's so, so bad. But what I do there is I back myself into the cage and just let them come to me because, pardon me, if you're running around, you're just going to get taken into that headlock animation. Yeah, good. But you know I'm no expert at that part of the game. Now this is interesting because I'm pretty sure that I put a scav bot here before. So you can put the scav bot in like the same location more than once. I think I knew that but it kind of never dawned on me. But there is a bit of backtracking in this game to be fair. Which isn't a problem for me. Yeah, just thinking about the um, the remake, and obviously mentioned it a couple of different times in this playthrough as we wait for it to release within the next 12 to 18 months, I'm guessing. That guy spawned that exact same way in Chapter 8, and he does it again. I mean, what the hell? But yeah, wonder if we'll see pure survival, if we'll see hardcore, etc., etc. One thing I'd like to see... And I was thinking about this in the last video. I had it I had it in my mind to say it, but I never did. You know, this game, the the look of the enemies and how I don't like the look of them as much. Like the leapers and the pukers, but even the slashes, like I miss the naked slashes in this game. But also they completely got rid of the remember the guys with the metal plated legs? I never thought those guys were used enough in the first two games. And you could have had a kind of thing where the harder the difficulty, the more armor-plated leg slashes there were. Or just armor them even more. I mean, that's going to be a mechanic, apparently, in the remake. There's like, you, you cut the flesh off, but the bone is still underneath. But essentially, all that is, is just making them tankier, isn't it? I don't know. Could be interesting. Yeah, this is where I put the rip core on, ladies and gentlemen. But I'd just like to see more games like this introduce something like the Evil Within 1 did, where you played Nightmare for the first time, you got to Chapter 3, and the Ruvik clones there. And you know that motherfucker doesn't turn up till Chapter 11 when you play on normal. And then the AI is a lot different. And the pathing is different. And 
the loot is different. They went to so much trouble in that game to give you a second, harder kind of experience. It felt like a different game. And yet, did anybody praise that game that it obviously deserved? No. People just complained about it being hard and were little bitches because they don't like you go within one and got shit tasting games. <laughs> but, to be fair, even though I'm talking a bit of shit here, I do believe I am right. Don't we want difficulties that are different than just, oh, this is harder, enemies hit harder, and you die quicker? Because with Evil Within and Nightmare, the enemy's HP is exactly the same. But they, the devs, thought of ways to make the game harder in terms of the layouts of things. And, you know, layouts of the enemies and bird traps, shit like that. Dead Space Remake should do that. And if Dead Space continued to be a great series after 1 and 2, these games should have done something similar. You know, even The Last of Us 2 had so much customization. And I really like the customizable difficulty in Last of Us 2. Where you can choose to get, like, loads of ammo. You can, or, you know, like, you put the supply, the resources to easy. Or the AI to grounded and, like, basically freaking psychic. And if you tweak the difficulty and have it some things on easy and some things on the hardest difficulty, it gives it a really interesting feel. It can do potentially. I love difficulty options and I just love geeking out about level design and kind of fantasizing what I'd do if I was to make one of these kinds of games, you know? I guess we've all done it with our favourite games. Lord knows I have. You know what I'm saying? Also, I've got to say here in the background, you can hear this music. It does play in a lot of the optional missions. It's so out of place, but I kind of like it. Listen it. Certainly a bit light-hearted. Somehow it kind of works. I don't know. I like it in this game. So. Catching puke. It's a bit annoying hearing the Ripper Blade all the time when you're using my weapon, man. You know, sometimes I always have a bottle of water. I've got a glass bottle of water here. It's like, I don't know what size this is. Maybe half a litre? And sometimes, even if I'm at home all day, especially if I'm at home all day, I like fill it up once or twice and I'll sip it throughout the day. But sometimes I couldn't tell you whether I've drank enough or not enough. It's weird. I don't know if you guys can relate to that, but the days where I don't know how much I've hydrated myself. Well, that is a bit of a clusterfuck of a room. And the game does this in the second half of the game quite a few times. Malfunction. Decontamination. Quarantine. And this goes pretty well, but there's one moment where I panic and I believe I stasis a Yuka for no reason and put myself under pressure. Oh my god. Have a leg, there it is. I stasis that slasher, that's what it is. Yet there's a vent behind me. Don't want to be next to that vent. Four plasma energy it took for down that slasher then. It's not over yet. And 
there we have it. Sometimes when I do these videos, in my head I'm thinking, did I say this or did I not? I don't think I've said this. Forgive me, ladies and gentlemen, I already have, but I really lament the fact that you've got to have the credits and the heavy frames and all that shit in your inventory in this game. It shouldn't have been a thing that went into your inventory. And the new suits should have still given you more inventory and armor. Which they don't on this game. These fights with the slashes are kind of fun, but although I say that the optional missions in this game are decent and I quite like them, something that you might notice here is that these fights are essentially the same one after another, you know? legs. Yeah, they're kind of the same one after another and <sighs> kind of loses its meaning fighting the enemies. So you're going to see me struggle here though, ladies and gentlemen, with the battery. If you've ever seen anyone play the first Dead Space for the first ever time, You'll see them struggle to put these batteries in the slots here. And I did as well on my first playthrough. But now subsequently, every time I replay the first two games, I'm absolutely fine with it. It's easy. But for some strange reason, in the third game, I still struggle. I don't know how. How can it be different? But it does feel different. And I'm going to struggle again in a minute, as you'll see. Got a repeater though. Pardon me. My food was just repeating on me. <laughs> but yeah, there's also a way in this game with the plasma cutter. And I don't know how, because I don't like this game's weapon system. I've already spoken about it. But you can actually make the plasma cutter, the tip of it, wider. You can actually make it wider. And it's great for cutting off legs. Like, two legs at once, even. Like I said, I somehow have trouble with these goddamn batteries. I don't know how. How is it different? You'd never seen this happen for me in the first two games. Gee, I hope some slashes aren't going to come into this room and it's going to be a copy-paste job. That would be a real shame. Yeah, this is essentially now, I think, maybe the fourth, the fifth room where we've just fought lots of slashes and the fights are just exactly the same. I mean, it's 
weird, man, because there are stages of this game where you will fight different kinds of enemies at once, and of course that happens in the second game, and people complain about this game being way too action-oriented, oriented, sorry, and it is. But here, they're just throwing slashes at you non-stop, it's weird, or one puke amongst the slashes, like feeders, exploders, crawlers. Where's the variety here? Like, there's not as many infectors in this game. It's like they just couldn't be asked. It's so weird. Like, in the second game, the variety of enemies and the way that the fights are orchestrated, the scenarios, are just, for me, perfection in terms of the game's pacing and, like, the room sizes as well. What I mean by that is, you know, a small room, you don't want an exploder in there with you etc stuff like that but here we're just fighting the same enemies all the time where's the variety very strange like in this game do you ever fight the pack at the same time as slashes and other enemies i don't know if you do you know Here's another room, point in question, all you guys who love Dead Space 3, this is what I'm talking about. Tons more slashes, and then maybe one or two pukers. Where's the freaking variety, man? Oh my lord, we're using the Ripper, people! Again, I'm not expecting this future. And I get debated. Way too many enemies, but hey ho, that's the story of this game. Metal Thunder. Can't even remember what that gun is. But boy, does it so cool! Oh. Dear Lord, I'm tired. I've got a spur parts box, and I'm not afraid to use it, ladies and gentlemen. Seems like it's coming along on the ride with us. Just thinking as well with this game, when we're talking about the enemies and shit. Obviously, with it being a force coming through walkthrough, I'm trying to find the right balance between talking about the game and talking about other things whilst I play, but... The, the Stalkers, they enter the game really late. I think it's chapter 13, maybe? Maybe 11. Definitely not chapter 12 and all that. Very late. And then there's Twitchers in the really late game as well. And obviously I don't like the Scooby-Doo Fisherman enemies, but I think they were reintroduced. Have we met them again? They're Red Toe Volantis, but I don't know if we've seen them yet. I don't think we have. I think that's in the next chapter, chapter 10. Well, they've not been in the game since chapter 5. It's pretty weird, ladies and gentlemen. 
That's all I'm saying. My god, I'm knackered. I need at least four hours sleep tonight. Just give me four hours sleep. I'll be happy. Nah, not quite. I think I get more sleep than that, but... Some nights, I just don't know how often or how many hours I sleep, you know? I can tell when I've not had as much sleep because obviously I feel ultra groggy. And that's the same for everyone. Resources there, the spare parts box. Obviously, including Awakened. I did mention it before, but ladies and gentlemen, I am doing Awakened. Well, I've already done it, but that's in three chapters, but I'm just doing it as one whole video. It lasts an hour, so. I wasn't going to cut it up into three 20 minute videos, there's no point. This project being 20 videos long, that suits me, that's just fine. Well here it is ladies and gentlemen. Get used to seeing this beautiful room, because we're going to see it quite a few more times later on. This is the repeated room, which happens about at least three, if not four times in the game. And basically, this is the gauntlet of a million enemies. Holy fucking shit, what were they thinking of? Let's see what variety of enemies we get here. I can't remember, but what I'll tell you is this way too many. Oh shit. There's a vent above me here, and I know that, but... Oh, here we go. Feel like Tom York in 1993, ladies and gentlemen. My rib car. That's a bit of a vague reference, but oh well. But as I can see, these guys are getting absolutely freaking destroyed here. Oh, that was close. Reloading. That's a puker, and I think I'm gonna have to shoot this guy. Oh shit! Dropping in. Explosive. Cheeky bit of tungsten. <laughs> oh my god. I got distracted by the puker then. That's really why I got hit though. This one doesn't sound up it. Why I'm reloading there, but okay. <laughs> I force gunned the claw away there. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. You know, a few minutes ago I was talking about the weird way that this game gives you enemies. Like, we all know there's way too many waves of enemies in this game, there's way too much action, etc., etc., but. I was talking about there's not a lot of variety within the fights. Well, yet again, though, it's just slashes and pukers. It's like, what the hell? But you know what? I just realised how I think I mentioned this earlier on in the game, but it really does burr repeating now. Obviously, they are frustrating, annoying, 
difficult enemies, even in the masterpiece that is Dead Space 2, but the Leapers, where are the Leapers? Instead of having, like I must have killed the, what, 30, 40 enemies? Half the enemies have put in a few explorers and Leapers and shit, you know? It gives you a variety of combat. You know, people have complained about this game's action, but I've never heard anyone really complain about what I've just complained about, but it's true. Anyway, getting to the end of this chapter now. I won't be rushing into doing a post commentary walkthrough again. This was a real labour of love, this one. You know, I didn't want to... I didn't want to do this project, quite simply, ladies and gentlemen. Anyone who knows how I feel about this game... Pardon me, ...will not be surprised to hear that. Because I have such huge problems with this game. Certainly don't hate it, but... Uh, oh! Remember before, when I said about my controller disconnecting? It happens once in this playthrough, and there it is. Imagine if that happened when you're playing on hardcore, though. <laughs> Goodbye. You are dead. I did think about doing a project for The Last of Us Part 2. Because obviously I didn't record my first playthrough. It's a massive game. I don't think it's a masterpiece like the first game, but it's, it's gameplay is fantastic. It's so fun. And I thought about doing a hard difficulty permadeath playthrough, which, you know, because when Naughty Dog released Grounded, they released the Grounded trophy and they released the complete the game on permadeath on any difficulty trophy. Very, very cheeky, very sneaky, but to be fair, absolutely genius. Absolutely genius. Because what they're saying there is, we know no one can complete grounded on permadeath. You're going to have to play our game again twice. And I have to commend them, because that is <laughs> freaking evil. <laughs> it really is. And yeah, I completed permadeath on, on normal. And then I tried it a few months later on hard. And I died about 75% of the way into the game. And lost all my progress. Now... With that game's permadeath, you can actually choose permadeath whole game, permadeath per act, permadeath per chapter. You still get the trophy for completing it at the end. And it seems like a lot of games are including a permadeath difficulty. It really ups the tension. Ultimately, permadeath isn't my favourite kind of hardest difficulty. But, add something new fresh to the table. I love different difficulties like I was saying before and I don't want to do a walkthrough for The Last of Us 2 on normal difficulty for permadeath. I just feel like hard difficulty would be, you know, decent. You've got to be decent at the game to complete it without dying on hard. But I'm just not that good at that game. It'd be more of a let's play than a walkthrough. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that might come to the channel one day. I'm not sure. I wouldn't be complaining about it, by the way, like I do with this game. I have issues with Last of Us 2, but I don't hate it. No, is this the one? Oh, no. Wait a minute. If I turn around here... This is the door, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this. Walk away from the door. Go up to the door. New loot. Stasis pack. Walk away from the door. Walk up to the door. Medium med pack. Rinse and freaking repeat. You can do this until the end of time. Like two packs of core once said. Yep, you can just keep doing that if you want to. Because this is a well developed video game. But speaking of well developed video games, Snow Beast is coming up. And the first fight against it goes pretty well. In fact, to be fair, you know, 
The fights against it go overall okay, but there's one fight, the last fight with it, where you finally kill the bloody thing. And that one, that's where the game gets pretty bad in my opinion. And I'm losing my patience by that point. Let's just say the gameplay isn't great. But after a lot of backtracking and not really making any progress, to be perfectly honest with you, now we are going to. Now I mentioned before how I always liked in the past to have a grenade launcher to fight the snow beast. Well, I think that though was the survey charge, and the survey charge is the grenade launcher. So the game's basically telling you you're gonna need to get explosive. Ah, no. Whoa, what? Whoa! Oh, for God's sake. Boom, and I'm back. Seamless, huh? For some reason, my movie video video editor, it keeps stopping the video. But my ability to narrate over the video with the, web, uh, the microphone stays. But the video stops. That's happened multiple times on this Let's play, and I don't know why it's happening. So, <laughs> that's why I got shocked then. I saw it happening. You guys, you probably won't even hear the microphone go off for a couple of seconds, but I had to stop it and start again. Weird, man. The video keeps playing. I can hear it with the sound of it, but the video stops, and I have to stop the recording. You'd understand if you could see it, if that's a bit complicated. And you're thinking, what is he talking about? If you could see what I'm seeing on my laptop screen when it happens, you'd understand. It's a little bit frustrating though, and I don't know why it's happening. But there's the Scooby-Doo Fishermen. This is the reintroduction, really, after a long time away. They most certainly haven't been missed, ladies and gentlemen, because they're a piece of shit, and I hate them. quick time event here where we actually look at that. We push the left stick. <laughs> this game of course released at the start of 2013. Towards the end of the Xbox 360 PS3 era. And I think, to be honest with you, that's probably the peak of quick time events in video games. Like, in video games in 2021, no. I'm sure there are still a few games out there that are still using QTEs, but they're not as prevalent. But they don't really bother me in Dead Space. They're not difficult at all. But I was just thinking, you know, the original Tomb Raider reboot came out in early 2013. <laughs> that game's quick time events are fucking ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous, man. When you repeat play a game with quick time events, the way that you press the buttons when the QTEs appear tell you all you need to know about that game's QTEs. With Dead Space, I'm just gently tapping the button. With Tomb Raider, I'm like, oh no, please not this again. And with Resident Evil 4, <laughs> <laughs> One of the first games of QTEs of that kind, really. Those QTEs are insane. I am button mashing like a maniac. That first one where Leon's running down that boulder. Running down that hill and that boulder's chasing him, man. I am mashing like my life depends on it. Christ almighty. But yeah, this is the arena fight. I mean, look at this thing. It's a boss fight arena, isn't it? Damn, look at that colour. We're going to be re reunited with a gang here. Oh my God. He's alive? Great. 
vault. It's so good to hear your voice. How did you make it? The ship. We thought you were dead. I followed a trail of flares. Are you guys all right? I saw Carver. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. Carver's close. We can hear you. Look, Isaac, please hurry up and get here. We're in central command. I'll be there as fast as I can. Norton didn't seem too happy to hear that we're alive. I mean, that guy's dialogue in this game, man, it's just, it's got to be amongst the worst in video game history. Not the voice actor, the voice actor did a decent job, but just what he's saying, like, it's just madness, absolute madness. Oh, shit. Oh. I thought I'd give myself a pulse rifle, but I've not. I'm a bit nervous at this stage, because I usually use a grenade launcher to kill this thing. But I don't here. And overall, this goes actually pretty well. The trick to this fight is when he's running at you, you've got to be running away. You have got to be running away. Otherwise, he's going to knock you on your ass, and it's a really vulgar attack. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing... Snow Beast. He's a real piece of shit. That attack there, make sure you're not looking at him. Otherwise, you're getting knocked down. Right, so what's he doing now? Running up close? No, he's still got tentacles. Oh, bit of stasis. Right, hunting up clusters. No, he's running at me again. All tentacles, what the frick? There we go, honey nut clusters are coming out. There they are, stasis up. Shoot them. You only have to shoot one of the three clusters. I used to think you had to destroy all three at once, but you don't. He's gonna run at me, I think. Is he? No, he's not. Using the rock in the middle here to protect myself as well. Pretty happy how this went to be fair. What are we doing now? He's running again. No, he's not. Running up clusters. Stasis. Going again. Ah, oh, and you only have to actually do it two times. I like the fact that he just gets up onto the like he's. I don't know. It's like a drunk bloke after the pub getting up the stairs after 15 pints of Stella you'd rather drink piss than Stella out there, wouldn't you? <laughs> bloody horrible yeah, we'll see that thing later unfortunately we're near the end of this video now we've just got one of the most cringeworthy cutscenes in the game with Norton and that right there is where the game will save if you're playing this on an original Xbox 360 that's where you would put the second disc in there's the pulse rifle straight after that boss fight and I always used to make a pulse rifle just purely for that boss fight. So basically what I'm saying here is I completely wasted my resources for no reason. Because I was just scared of that boss and it's a piece of shit to be honest. Although sometimes it can go really badly. I've had it where he's knocked me down a number of times. Got to keep your distance from him to be honest. Oh god, this room here on the right, and I think this goes really, really badly. But it's a strange room, it's a little garage. And it's like an optional room, you don't need to come in here. I like the fact that it's an optional room, That that's pretty sweet, but it's full of feeders, and let's see why this goes badly. I know it does, but I can't remember why, let's see. That prick's there for a start. I didn't know we were there. Oh, 
Oh, goodness gracious. Look at this. This is vulgar, man, this. Christ almighty. 20 seconds of downtime. Okay. That rip core's not working. But that's the way that I like to play Dead Space 1 and 2, you know. If I take damage, because I played the games a lot, you know, I wasn't like this on my first playthrough, of course. I was playing like shit just trying to survive, you know. But... Dead Space 1 and 2, if I take a couple of hits, I hate it. With this game, I just think it's a necessity for me to take hits because I meant to, you know. And ultimately, though, it was just a few random hits. And I'm playing on hard mode, not impossible. There is a difference. If it was impossible, my health would have been lower. But, you know, back up to full health. And it, it doesn't mean as much, man. said it before, but I love the difference between Survivalist and Zealot in the second game. Zealot feels so tough, but fur. Bring in the frame along with me, ladies and gentlemen. By the end of this game, I am a little bit fatigued with all the snow, if I'm being honest. It does end up getting a little bit too much. I'm probably going to forget about that frame now, aren't I? <laughs> You're awfully glad to see him. We need him. This mission needs Come on, him. We need him or you need him. Are you guys tough as a state and be captain? Stop. Just stop. We need to shut down that damn. <laughs> Listen, the rip no, car in the background. I, <laughs> I mean, I think I know how to find it. Well, I've been digging through what's left of the research. I hope Santos doesn't die. You know, she's kind of a throwaway NPC. But the written logs discuss a signal tracking service that pinpointed the machine's exact location. I think if we repeat it, we can do the same. But it's at the other end of the corridor. Yeah, fine, fine. Let's have a look. I could use a change of scenery. You what, mate? 